Hey folks, Tony from Tacoma, Washington. We're in the middle of the great 2012-2013 ammo shortage, and because I can't find any 9mm, I started reloading again. About 30 years ago, I used to reload 45, but now I'm starting to reload 9. Um, up until six months ago, it wasn't worth reloading 9 because I could buy them at Walmart for 20 cents a round. Now you can't even find uh, 9mm. So I decided to uh, buy some reloading stuff and start reloading. So when you start reloading, you have to have a chronograph. So I started researching the market, and I decided to buy a Shooting Crony F1. And let's unbox this guy. Okay, I'm doing this one-handed and holding my phone with the other hand, so bear with me. Pretty easy to set up. As a matter of fact, I've never seen a... Well, I've never worked with a chronograph before, but this thing is so easy to set up, it's just unbelievable. Oh, I need both hands to open it up. Hold on. Okay, so all you do to set this thing up is just fold the box open. Like that. And um, put the rods in as a guide. And I've marked my rod so that you can see where you're supposed to be shooting. Now the idea is you're supposed to shoot with this thing um, between 4 inches. I'm trying to get my finger in. 4 inches to 6 inches above that front sensor. And that's where the shooting area is. So what I did is I just marked my rods uh, so I would have something to aim at. So these just slip in um, like that. And you put all four of them in. I'll do that real quick. Hold on. Pain in the butt when the camera's moving like this. Hold on. Okay, and there it is set up with all four rods. And again, you want the bullet to pass between four inches and six inches above that front sensor. So in this area right in here. So like I say, I just marked my rods with some black, um, a black magic marker. It tells me where, where the right shooting path was. And I shot in this area right here. Now you also have a, a sky hood that goes over the top, and if it's a bright sunny day with no cloud cover, you need to use the uh, uh, the sky screens. But uh, I was shooting on a on a clouded day. Um, it was about 60 degrees. It was cloudy. It was nice and bright. Uh, and here's the results. Okay, the results are that I shot about 25 rounds. Um, shooting nine millimeter. I had some uh, some new reloads I wanted to check out, but just to test the unit. I was shooting some factory reloads that are rated for about 1,200 feet per second. Um, out of the 20 shots of that factory load I shot, almost all of the shots were too fast. They're reading in the 3,000 to 4,000 feet per second uh, range. I did all kinds of things. I put the sky hoods on, I changed shooting angles, I moved further back, I did a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I was getting one, one reasonable reading uh, for every 10 shots. So I probably shot 30 times and out of that 30 times I might have got five shots that that registered uh, in the in the correct range of about a thousand to eleven hundred feet per second. To be perfectly honest after about 20 or 30 shots I got so frustrated with the unit because I had driven all the way out to the shooting area spent the whole day just doing this one little project. I got so frustrated that I just I decided to just shoot the unit put it out of my misery. So I put a hole right through it. Um, here's the hole where I shot it, and it just blew the guts right out of the thing. And uh, you know what? I paid eighty-seven dollars for this. I bought it from Sportsman's Warehouse. Got a great deal on it for eighty-seven. You know, it was eighty bucks plus seven dollars Washington State tax. Uh, and I knew when I was squeezing the trigger that I was making an eighty-dollar decision. But I was so frustrated that you have a you have a, de a device that has one purpose in to, for existence to to measure velocity of bullets, and you take it out on what should be a perfect day, you read the instructions, everything it should be perfect, and the thing doesn't work. Uh, yeah, I was pretty frustrated. I spent the whole day, me and my wife, we all packed up the truck and drove out to the shooting area, and uh, just couldn't get the darn thing to work. Now, I did a lot of research on the forums and found that, you know, most people who have these like them pretty well. They seem to work good for the average guy. I don't know what happened with me. Um, 30 years ago when I was reloading, I tried to get a chronograph and had about the same results. Uh, it just wasn't accurate enough. Uh, so I took that one back 30 years ago. This one didn't fare so well. This one just pissed me off, so I shot it. Um, so I'm going to need another chronograph. You can't reload without a chronograph. You have to know how fast those bullets are going. 
So uh, I think the next one I'm going to try is the Pro Crony. I've uh, done some more research. Um, I don't want to spend a fortune on a chronograph because I'm not going to use it that much. But, uh, you know, when you take it out of the box and set it up, you need, you need accurate measurements. It's pointless to use a chronograph that isn't accurate. And I'm going to post the results from this uh, right after I get through talking and before we go to the Pro Crony. But out of the 30 rounds I shot, I can say most of them were reading way, way too high. Anyway, this is my experience with the Pro Crony, or excuse me, with the Shooting Crony F1. Uh, it didn't make it through one day of shooting with me. Here's the results. Okay, so here I am back with the Pro Chronograph Digital, and you can see that the box is quite a bit bigger than the Shooting Crony F1. And that's because the uh, Pro Chrono Digital doesn't fold open the way um, the Crony does. Let's compare them uh, set up. Okay, and here they are set up, and you can see that they're almost the same size, but the Pro Crony, the Pro Chrono uh, Digital is a little bit larger than the Shooting Crony. Uh, it's a little bit longer and just a little bit wider. Uh, now one of the advantages of the Pro Chrono is that the instructions say that you can shoot anywhere within the uh, triangle sh uh, formed by the rods. So you have a much larger uh, shooting area with the Pro Chrono. And again, you're limited to um, between 4 and 6 inches above the sensor on the shooting crony. Now one of the things I just noticed in setting this up is uh, the Pro Chrono is, has a plastic case, and it seems to be a durable plastic, so I'm not concerned about the quality of the plastic, but it's really light. And if you were to put the sky screens on, the wind would easily tip this. So you're going to have to use this um, mounted to a tripod, whereas the shooting chronograph, the shooting crony, excuse me, uh, is, is a, sits on a real nice uh, secure metal base, and that, that's kind of an advantage. Uh, but of course what I'm concerned about is how accurate they are and um, so let's let's do some uh, some tests with the Pro Chrono Digital. Okay, setup on the Pro Chrono Digital is really simple. Uh, you just take it out of the box. You got to install a battery which is uh, about as simple as it can be. The battery compartment's on the bottom side. Uh, the battery slips in really easy, even easier the uh, the shooting crony is easy to put the battery in, but the Pro Chrono Digital is even simpler. And one of the nice things about the Pro Chrono Digital is it has a second compartment for a spare 9 volt battery, uh, which is pretty nice. And both of them say that they last about, you know, 48 hours on a fully charged 9 volt battery. So I'll slip that in and turn it over. Hold on. Okay, the battery is hooked up and connected. We put the cover back on, turn it over, uh, and put the rods in place. And that's it, it's set up and ready to go. It's got a power switch on the side of the unit, turning it on for the first time. The display flashed that it was ready, and now it's saying um, ready for string one. So it looks like it's uh, ready to go. Now I'm not uh, out at the shooting area today, I'm at home, uh, so I can't shoot my firearm through it. But I'm going to test it with a couple of other things to see if I can get it to read. Okay, so I'm at home. I'm going to use my, my slingshot and uh, shoot a rock through and see if it registered. Actually, I just set it up and, and I shot a rock through as a test. Uh, first thing I've ever sent through it, and it registered the rock just fine. It came up string, uh, string one. Shot the rock through, it said it was going 149 feet per second, uh, and I'll just do that on camera so you can see it. Of course my dog got in the way. Okay, here we go.
and it's showing string two, and that one says it's 141 feet per second. So this is already so much better than the shooting crony. Um, I've just got this sitting on the tail of my truck. It's, it's, under, it's under my canopy, so the sun is shining through my canopy glass. Um, it's in the shadow of the house. Um, this is much worse lighting condition than the shooting crony, uh, and this is working well already. So I'm going to shoot another rock through. 140 that time string. So it says string one, shot three. Looks to be working very nicely. I'm pretty impressed so far. And here's a shot of the setup. Like I say, it's just sitting on the tail of my truck. Uh, it's under my canopy, right next to the shadow of the house. It is a fairly bright, uh, clear day. There are some clouds, uh, which are lots of blue sky today. It's very bright. Uh, when I was using the uh, the shooting Crony F1, it was completely over overcast, but it was a bright overcast day. The instructions say that uh, that's ideal conditions because it likes a cloudy day. Uh, but I could say I could not get the Pro Crony F1 to read correctly. And here we just set up the uh, the Pro Chrono Digital, shot a couple rocks through it, and it seems to be working very well. Um, next test, I'm going to get out my pellet gun and see how if it reads that. Okay, I went and got my pellet gun, and my pellet gun is rated at a thousand feet per second. And I shot uh, several, I shot four times through the chronograph. And the first three times, the chronograph didn't register the shots at all. Uh, and so I moved the, the barrel of the pellet gun uh, up and down. Um, and when I positioned it about three inches above the front sensor and shot, uh, I did get a reading. It's re registering 604 feet per second. Um, now I have no idea. This is an old pellet gun. I have no idea what it's shooting, but 604 seems pretty low to me. So I'm going to continue uh, shooting a few more through and see what happens. Okay, I shot uh, several more pellets through, and um, I continued to get an error message, ERR. Uh, so what I did was I went ahead and put the sky screens on. It is uh, really in a bright place. And, you know, so I decided to put the sky screens on. I shot one time, uh, and it gave me an immediate reading, and it read 827 feet per second, which uh, seems more in line with the potential of the pellet gun, uh, and it read it real well. So I'm going to shoot a few more times uh, and see what happens. Okay, well, so far I'm pretty impressed. It read the pellet gun pretty good. Uh, once I put the sky screens on. So this is my last shot with the pellet gun, 832. Um, it gives you lots of functions. So here's the review function. And now it's saying that shot 8 was 839, shot 7 was 825, shot 6 was 834, shot 5 was 827, uh, shot 4 was 604. This is the first shot with the pellet gun without the sky screens. It read, it read too low. Uh, this is um, my my shot three was with the uh, slingshot shooting a rock through. Uh, shot two was with a slingshot, and shot one was with a slingshot. Then it's going to give me our our high number, and then our low number. Um, one AU, probably the average at 576. Uh, one ES, I'm not sure what that is. I'll have to look it up. 699. Uh, I'm not sure what that is either. And then it goes back to the beginning of, at shot 9. So, like I say, I haven't uh, shot any firearm through it yet, but uh, just playing around the house, it seems to be working very well. Uh, I'm so much happier with the um, Pro Chrono Digital uh, than the, uh, the shooting Crony um, so far. Take care. Okay, here we are out at the shooting area. We're getting ready to test um, the Pro Crony Digital. It's about 11.30. It's, uh, it's a very, very nice, bright, sunny day. Uh, there's almost not a cloud in the sky. The sun is almost directly overhead. I've got the chronograph set up on a tripod. We're going to be shooting through it uh, into a stump over there with a white plate on it. 
I'm going to be shooting uh, from a sitting position 10 feet from the chronograph. So I'll be seated in that chair and I'll be shooting through the chronograph uh, at that white plate in the stump trying to shoot directly across the top of the sen sensor. It looks like the this initial string is going to pass about six inches above the top of the sensor. Here we go. Test gun today is going to be a Glock 19. Uh, first thing we're going to shoot are the cellar and below. These things are reasonably hot. I don't remember what they advertise as a feet per second, but I think it's uh, it's about 1,200 or a little over 1,200. Um, I'll look it up and put it in the show notes. Okay, this time I've loaded up some Federal HST 124 grain plus P. These have a rated velocity of 1,200 feet per second. Okay, here's the results from the uh, 1,200 feet per second Federal HST. My last shot was 1194. The ninth shot was 1224. The eighth shot was 1215. 7, 1204, 1212, 1211, 1213, 1228, 1197, and 1206. That was the first shot. This next group is going to be Federal Champion. 115 grain full metal ja uh, jackets. This is the kind you get from Walmart. It says on the box that it has rated at 1125 feet per second. Okay, here's the Federal Champion. Uh, rather than show you the string, I'm just showing you the, the high it was 1144, the low was 1118, and the 10 shot average was 1137. Again, advertised velocity on the box is 1125. So from what I'm seeing, the chronograph is really working well. Uh, the two known velocities for the HST was 1200 feet per second. Uh, the average has to be very just over 1200 feet per second. And here we have um, the federal champions that are rated at 1125. Uh, and the chronograph is showing the average at 1137. So um, I think the chronograph is... Uh, is reading very accurately. I'm, I'm very pleased so far. Well, all right, that's the end of the test. I just shot about uh, 70 or 80 rounds on a very bright, sunny day, the kind of day that uh, the chronograph instructions say are not ideal. Uh, chronographs like to work against cloud cover. This is an absolutely bright, sunny day. The Pro Chrono Digital met every one of my expectations. Uh, it registered every one of my, whatever I shot, 70 or 80 shots, um, and it seems to be verifiably accurate. I didn't mention it, but I bought this chronograph uh, from Cabela's. Uh, it's actually available for a little bit less money, around $100 online from like Midwest Shooting Supply and some other online uh, uh, retailers. Uh, I bought this one from Cabela's because I wanted it uh, to have it immediately. I paid $135, I think, from, Co from Cabela's, or $130. With uh, Washington State tax, it was $142. I know I could have bought it for about $30 less online, but I, I could say I wanted it. I think for $100 or $142, it's an absolutely uh, great investment. So uh, from what I'm seeing in my first uh, uses at home and, the, and uses here in the field with my handgun, um, I would have absolutely no qualms about uh, recommending the Pro Chrono Digital to anybody. That's it. Take care, guys.